User parameters are one of the most useful features in Fusion 360, especially when you're designing functional 3D printed parts like the magnetic brackets I made for this towel rack. You can see here my original quick and dirty solution, which the 3D printed version replaced, and this was just some strong rare earth magnets attached to the store-bought brackets with double-sided tape. As you can see, this didn't really work, and the towel rack kept sliding down the side of our oven. I knew I needed a bespoke solution, and I thought 3D printing might hold the answer. Like all of my functional 3D prints, this project started by taking a few precise measurements with my dial calipers, which measure to 1 1,000th of an inch. I'm always surprised with how few measurements I have to take to design a 3D printed part that actually works. And in this case, I only needed four measurements. The diameter of the magnet, the thickness of the magnet, the diameter of the rod, and the distance between the center of the rod and where the bracket meets the wall. Beyond these four dimensions, I could figure out the rest of the design in Fusion, but for these four I had to be really precise, so I made sure to take a few measurements for each one and then take the average. Now that I have all my necessary measurements, I can go ahead and import them into Fusion 360. So I'm going to go to the Modify dropdown and click on Change Parameters, and this is where you input user parameters into Fusion. So I'll click the little plus mark, and then type in my first parameter. And this one is magnet diameter. So the unit is inches, and the expression, which is really just the measurement, is 1.162. And the reason it says expression is because you can actually input mathematical expressions into that area. But most of the time, these for me are just numbers. So magnet thickness is 0 0.111 inches, Rod diameter, 0 0.643 inches. And finally, wall offset is 1.362 inches. And at any time, I can come in and edit these or add new user parameters. But for now, I'll just click OK. So now I'm ready to start designing my new and improved magnetic bracket. So I'll go ahead and create a new sketch and start by just sketching out the two magnets that I'm going to use for each bracket. So the diameter is magnet diameter, so I can just type that, and as it starts to autofill, click enter. And I wanna have two magnets for each bracket. So I'll draw a line from the center down, and this will be magnet diameter in length, change this to a construction line, and then draw another circle, magnet diameter in diameter hit enter, and there we go. There are the magnets that will hold up my bracket. So I'll extrude each of these by the magnet thickness user parameter, and there are my two magnets that will form the core of the bracket. So then I'll just create a new sketch and start designing everything else around these. And at this point in the design process, I like to have my calipers right next to me to help me in deciding how thick or thin to make different elements of the piece. So I think the thickness between the magnet and the edge of the bracket can be 0.2 inches. And what I can do is instead of typing 0.2, I can add a new user parameter so I can change this distance at any point in my design. So I'll click on plus, and I'll just call this one wall thickness change it to 0 0.2 and click OK. And then I'll double click this dimension and change it to wall thickness. So if I want to adjust this at any point in my design, I can just change that user parameter. And now I can go ahead and extrude these profiles to form the base of the bracket. So I'll right click, extrude, and for now, I'm just going to type in 0.2. But now I realize what I want to do is create a new user parameter, and I'll call this one base thickness. And again, we'll just call that 0.2 for now. And the reason I'm doing this is because I don't exactly know if this is the thickness that I want. So I'm going to change that 0.2 to base thickness, and then if later on when I'm testing the design out in the slicer and I want to change that, 
rather than going back in the timeline, I can just go to modify, change parameters, and then change the base thickness to let's say 0.3. Hit enter, and then that adjusts in real time. And let's say I want the wall thickness to be 0.4. I hit enter, and just like the base thickness, that adjusts in real time. And I'll just undo those for now, and I'll just subtract the magnets from the base. Use the cut tool, and there we go. I have my basic bracket. I'm going to use the section analysis tool to see how thick of material I have under the magnet cutouts. And to me, that looks a little thin. I can actually just go ahead and measure it. And I see that that's only 0.089 inches thick. And with my calipers next to me, that looks a little thin. So I think I'm going to increase the base thickness to 0.3 inches. And that looks a little more robust. So I'll click OK and I can hide the section analysis. Now we can start working on a perpendicular plane and design the part of the bracket that will actually hold the rod. So I'll project the bottom surface, and from this, I want to go up by the wall offset parameter that I created before. Change that to a construction line, and if you remember when I was measuring this, this goes right to the center of the rod, which makes it really easy to model in Fusion. So just at this point, I'll create a circle that is rod diameter in diameter. And I'll just offset this outwards by the wall thickness user parameter. For this part of the design, that looks a little thick. I think I can change this to maybe let's say wall thickness divided by two. So now it's just 0.1 inches. And I think that could, should be sufficient, but we can always adjust it later on. So I'll extrude this profile on both sides, two sides, or just symmetric. And I'll extrude it by, let's say, 0.3 inches on both sides, which gives me a total length of 0.6 inches, which is pretty comparable to the existing bracket. So now I have this part, and functionally, the only thing left to do is connect this donut shape, or hollow cylinder, to the base. And then we can project some of our geometry and just sketch out a nice connector. This is a great opportunity to use the spline tool, which allows you to do really nice curves. And I'm going to make this a little beefier than the existing bracket, since I'll be printing it from PETG and the existing one is metal. I can go ahead and mirror this and then extrude. And I think for this one, I will do the full wall thickness symmetrically. So really that's the wall thickness divided by two. But looking at it, that does seem a little skinny. So I think I'll just edit that feature and change it to the full wall thickness on one side. So on both sides, it's the wall thickness times two or 0.4 inches. And at this point, that is a pretty solid basic design, so I'll bring it into my slicer to see what it looks like once it will be 3D printed. I'll change the filament to PETG. So there's my bracket in Prusa Slicer, and to make sure it's as strong as possible, I'm going to print it on its side so that the tension load is parallel to the layer lines. And of course, I'm going to duplicate this because I need to. Everything looks good to go, so I'm going to go ahead and export the G-code and get to 3D printing. When I modeled the cutouts for the magnets, I didn't add any tolerance. In other words, I modeled these cutouts the exact same size as the magnets themselves. I thought I would be able to get a tight press fit, but the fit was so tight that I couldn't even push the magnets into place. 
so I had to do a tiny bit of carving with my rotary tool, but this only took a few minutes. You can sometimes get away with this zero tolerance press fit method, especially when it's for a really small piece of hardware. But for this project, I probably should have added a few thousandths of an inch to the magnet diameter and the magnet thickness in the modeling. After checking the fit, I used super glue to secure the magnets in place. Just like the slots for the magnets, I didn't add any tolerance for the rod to slide into the bracket. And this was a really tight fit, but I was able to get it in place with my mallet. But next time, I would definitely add a thousandth or two of tolerance here as well. After reassembling the rack, the only thing left to do was stick it to the side of our oven, and our kitchen towels once again had a home. I hope you learned something from this video, and let me know if there are any other Fusion 360 tutorials you would like to see. Thanks for watching, and have a great day.